Let's do FOMO now. Alphabet's another name that's been very, very strong, up 1.65%. Basically, big tech is just taking the market, put it on its back once again, and save the show. No kidding, because now, I when mentioned we were lower, I believe it was Meta earlier in, in the session here. Now we are green across the board as far as the MAG7 is concerned. A rare day when even Tesla and Apple are higher here. I know Apple has some, some news, but when looking at Alphabet, they have been one of the strongest names on the week. We're now up, I mean, 4% week to date. That's not too shabby considering it hasn't been a straight shot to the upside in the overall markets in tech this week. But they did kick off their annual Google Cloud Next conference this two, or this past Tuesday and really used this conference to gather more than 30,000 visionaries and they said the world's industry leaders to make explicit declarations that Google Cloud is placing generative AI at the center of its offerings with the aim to revolutionize its business operations. So they showed that really their ambition for enterprise AI products goes beyond streamlining tasks as their CEO did put and these AI advancements enable enterprises to do things today that just weren't possible before. The AI and announcements really showed that they are trying to rival the powerhouses being OpenAI and Microsoft, as well as overall the AI-empowered tools that are revolved around B2B enterprises. Google did ramp up its competitive efforts in against Microsoft in this AI arms race. They've been seen, I believe, in, in at least my opinion and my coverage as, as the second place to Microsoft in the large language models, but they're trying ever so difficultly to, to try to recapture that market share. But overall, they've expanded on their Gemini offerings and their in, advancements into AI. We do hear from them in the beginning of April, or excuse me, the beginning of, I believe it's April 24th is when we get Alphabet's earnings. So that is also something to keep on our radar, or 23rd, excuse me. We hear from them the same day as Microsoft. But mm -hmm. unfortunately for Alphabet, they report consistently on the same day, same time as Microsoft, and they've always played second fiddle. I mean, it feels like even though they report really strong ad growth and they'll report really strong data center improvements, it seems like it's just never enough, at least comparatively to Microsoft. And then shares always fall, but they've still been growing at a really healthy pace. Yeah, that's been sort of the recent trend, no doubt. And uh, we know Microsoft's kind of uh, move is to you know put the numbers out, see what happens in that first like an hour or so. And then they come out with their guidance during the press conference piece to it or the, you know, the conference call but when I look at Alphabet, I see a lot of green up on a day, up on a week, up on a month, up on three months, six months, 12 months, three years. This is a strong uptrend that's been reestablished after a pretty lackluster start to the year. So Alphabet finally getting some momentum. There was that chatter, Jenny, if you remember, probably about a month ago now uh, where Apple and, and Alphabet were going to team up for uh, the AI uh, momentarily. And I don't even know if that was ever confirmed, but just the chatter of that like completely changed the, the thought around how uh, Alphabet that's AI offering was perceived. Now we're hearing about partnerships uh, for Home Depot and others. So it seems like uh, Alphabet and, and Google and its AI have finally started to get a little bit more of a firm footing and it's allowed for uh, this stock to retake uh, its kind of throne as an outperformer. And it is also part of this. I know we discussed this story a bit earlier on this show today, but it's also part of this this build out and or build with, I should say, with Japan as they did announce they'll be investing about one billion dollars in digital connectivity to Japan to support their J Japan dig digitization initiative and improve their overall digital connectivity between the U.S., Japan, and other Pacific islands. We did also hear this is really funding the expansion of what is being called Google's Pacific Connective Initiative. It covers all. Australia, the French Polynesia, and the addition of also these these various entities in Japan to expand its fiber optics. So this is this is a, another win for Alphabet. It mm -hmm. seems like these companies have been really building their cash position for this very moment because all of them, I mean, they are spending to build. No doubt. Mark Mahaney at Evercore, tactical outperform list, views earnings as a short-term risk reward. Um, as a positive and an, uh, as, as an attractive risk reward setup. So uh, that was another thing that really stuck out to me, Jenny, when you look at this stock and, and how well it's been performing because it had that little pocket of underperformance. It's actually as if, you know, it's still got room to go where so many of these other names, you know, way past, I mean, how many, you know, times over as NVIDIA made an all-time high? Microsoft seemingly hasn't had uh, one step backwards in the better part of two years. And now Apple, 
Apple certainly has, uh, and Alphabet certainly has, but it's like with that backwards movement that we saw earlier in the year, it's only allowed uh, for optimism when it's come back to only grow. Volatility levels are, are starting to peak up here ahead of earnings, so that's another thing that I'm focused on, Jenny, but not entirely uncommon as we know that earnings, particularly for Alphabet, have been volatile. They have, and I think, yeah, it's just like the, the ill timing in which they always have to follow in, in Microsoft's footsteps, which is unfortunate for them, but at least they are some of the few that kick it off because then later that week we, we hear from more of these, these massive names. So the, it gets busy once we start April like 23rd on for these major tech names. Also, I think it's important to note that there was all of this negativity around some of the, the federal sort of speculation and litigation facing these companies. Mm. I mean, you can't even tell from a chart. That's always what seems to happen. I'm not discounting the the un, uh, sort of undermining the importance of antitrust concerns, but mm. they have been facing scrutiny from not only us here in the U.S. as far as regulators are concerned, but also U.K. regulators have also been fairly critical of their dominance, mostly in terms of search as as Alphabet's Google does command a vast majority of the overall search, not only here in the U.S., but also in the world. And that, that has been an area of concern. However, it never seems like it actually even matters. It's like we talk about this for a few days. We talk this about is Apple. a great point, right? Because this is the yeah. risk you can see for all of these companies, yeah. right? It's like, hey, they've gotten really big. They're really, really powerful, maybe too powerful in some cases. Their market positions are, you know, borderline mo monopolies in some cases. And there's a lot of political rhetoric around it. It's heated at times. But it does seem, at times, and it has been at least, that it's a lot more talk than real action against these companies. I know there's been a lot that's come out of Europe. Um, but it really doesn't seem to derail the rallies. It doesn't really say, seem to do more than some you know, headline surprise risk from time to time.